We're, we're having fun with this one. Apparently, word is going around that OLED is unceremoniously on its way out the door. That is not true. And I'm gonna tell you not only why that isn't true, but why I would absolutely buy an OLED TV in 2025 or 2026. Welcome back to Caleb Rated, everyone. I'm Caleb, and if it seems like I'm a little taller today, it's because I'm on a soapbox again. This time about OLED TVs and the promulgation of the rumor that they are on death's door. Let me assure you, nothing could be further from the truth. I don't know who started it, but I'm going to end it. Honestly, it's not a hard conclusion for an enthusiast to draw, and enthusiasts like to shout their opinions out in forums, and the comment section of videos. I can see it happening. Also, journalists so far aren't helping with their clickbaity headlines for articles that often go unread by the folks who just see the headline and then turn around and, well, shout it out loud in forums and comment sections. You know what? I guess I do know how this probably got started. Anyway, it's understandable why folks might think that, but it's not true. And I'm excited to tell you why. Not only because I'm excited about the topic, but because I am going off script, baby. Off the dome. Also, we're getting a little bit moody with the lighting. What do you think? You like it? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, well, let Zeke know. But yeah, we're raw dog in this one. No safety net. I'm excited about that too. You know who isn't excited? Who's not excited, Zeke? I guess me. <laughs> Zeke is not as excited as I am. And that is because he knows he's gonna have to work extra hard in the edit to keep me from sounding like a doofus. Also, coming up with relevant B-roll for this one is gonna be hard because we haven't reviewed an OLED yet since launching this channel, which will change soon, but not soon enough to help Zeke. But you know what? I've got an idea that will help on both of those concerns. One, I'm just gonna suck less than normal, okay, Zeke? And number two, I think we can all agree, you and I, viewers, that it would be hilarious and totally fine to just use a bunch of cheesy stock B-roll of people watching TV. Like, the cheesier, the better. I think I can safely assume that you'll be okay with that, right, guys? So, how's that sound, Zeke? You excited now? Oh, yeah. All right, so, we fixed it. We fixed it. Okay, we're doing this. So, let's start out with why it's understandable that this rumor may have started, and why I'm seeing these questions that I am in my inbox. Um, why OLED TVs are on borrow time, even though there's no immediate concern. Then we'll talk about what's not wrong with OLED and also why they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And then maybe at the end, we'll talk about what my punishment will be in a couple of years in the very unlikely event that I'm wrong. I'm not. Okay, so let's start with what's kind of wrong with OLED. Well. They are expensive to make, and they will stay expensive to make unless there's a killer breakthrough in OLED printing technology. Whether blue OLED happens or not, because they are difficult and expensive to make, that means they are exponentially more expensive than LCD-based TVs as you go up in size. So an 83-inch OLED is really gonna test the limits on diehard TV fans, and anything larger than that is both hard to come by and ridiculously pricey. Now, we hear all the time, at least us journalists do, that large format screens, larger and larger and larger, are selling in higher and higher numbers. So if OLED can't keep up with the screen size craze, then certainly it's gonna crash and burn, right? No, not right, and I'll explain why in a moment. OLEDs are also not going to get any brighter, right? Well. Not necessarily. It may seem like OLED is at the end of its innovation road, but we thought that a couple of years ago, and look at all the progress that's been made since then. The LG G4 and the LG G5, crazy bright. And I bet they could probably squeeze a little more out. Okay, so then how about the fact that RGB mini LED and micro RGB backlighting gets LCD TVs to OLED-like performance levels while being way, way brighter, both in whites and colors. And soon enough, those could be cheaper to make than OLEDs. Well, there's a lot to all of that, but again, I'm gonna say no. Okay, Caleb, well, what about the idea that because OLED TVs aren't coming down in price very quickly, uh, brands are gonna abandon them because they just aren't selling enough of them. I don't think that's 
a real reason either. So instead of poo-pooing everything, let me actually reframe each of those ideas for you. And to be clear, I'm not making fun of anyone who thought those ideas were rational. They actually totally are, but they don't lead to OLED's death, right? Because there are other factors at play here that are just not being considered because they're not super obvious. Hey guys, not doing an ad, but I do want to take a break to share an exciting announcement. Now, this is for the entire consumer electronics industry, but I wanted you to hear it first. And the reason behind this decision is just as important as the decision itself, so stick with me for a second. First, I'm excited to announce that I am formally partnering up with CE Critic. Now, in the coming weeks, the details around that uh, and what that partnership will involve are going to be revealed. But what I can tell you now is that not only do we plan to bring unmatched value to folks shopping for all kinds of tech, especially home entertainment tech, but we intend to be an industry force to be reckoned with. A force for good, to be clear. Now, if you're not familiar with CE Critic, you will be soon. Um, think of it as the rotten tomatoes of tech reviews. For example, if you want to see the average score for a TV across a range of trusted reviewers and publications, you go to CE Critic. And there you're going to see my score averaged with those of other trusted reviewers as well as pull quotes and common pros and cons. It's going to seriously shorten up shopping research for a lot of folks and I'm really, really stoked about it. Now, the story behind this. The genius behind CE Critic, Dippin Setev, and I got to talking while I was involved in a legal battle to save my channel, brand, and business. And during our chats, we talked about the massive sea change taking place in digital media and decided we needed to do something about fostering trust and reliability in journalism and reviews for tech and consumer electronics. See, traditional websites and journalists are getting pounded by this invasive AI summary stuff. So along with CE Critic, I and my company, CD Creative Media, are gonna step in and make sure that folks like you can reliably get the information that you need and trust that information while being able to chat about it with the community at large. We're also going to help creators and brands during this transition in a way that I think we are uniquely suited for. Man, there's just, there's so much more to it. But for now, go check out CE Critic and leave a review. It really helps as we are very much in the beta phase. Tell your friends it's about to blow up and let's show brands that we are here to support journalistic integrity when it comes to making purchasing decisions. Thanks so much for listening. I am so excited. All right, let's get back to the video. OLED TVs are expensive to make, and the big sizes aren't getting cheap enough to compete with LCD-based technologies or even really great ultra-short throw projectors. So how can they possibly survive? Well, it's because OLED beats them all at one critical measure, micro contrast. Have you noticed that an OLED TV has dominated every TV shootout that it's participated in since it came around? Well, that's because it is undeniably awesome to look at. LCD, no matter how good the backlight gets, just can't compete with OLED for micro contrast. And that micro contrast makes a huge difference in aggregate. Also, large format screens may be getting more and more popular with the general public, but I really believe there's a limit to the growth that the ultra large TVs can enjoy. It's not like OLED gets left behind because the average Joe can't afford an 83 inch and larger. First, the average Joe isn't buying OLED, all right? Enthusiasts are. Second, the growth of the ultra large screen may be aggressive now, right? But what the TV brands don't talk about when they crow about their numbers is that there's limited potential to that growth, especially globally. I mean, outside the US, McMansions that can accommodate a, even an 85 inch plus screen are few and far between. Now here in the US, they are more popular, but there's still a limit to them. And at a certain point, folks don't want the focal point of their entire home to be their TV screen. They tell me this all the time. And there are fewer folks with the space for a dedicated entertainment room than you might think. Otherwise, I think we'd see a lot more dedicated home theater installations. So 
Just as there's a limit to the potential of ultra large screens, there's a limit to the potential appeal of ultra bright TVs, especially among those looking to buy OLEDs. OLEDs tend to be bought by folks who are looking for a specialty, luxury TV. They'll put it where ultra high brightness is possibly more of a liability than a benefit, honestly. The market for OLED TVs may not grow, okay? But it isn't going to shrink right away either. That's my prediction. Okay, so what about the idea that RGB backlit LCD TVs are so close to OLED that nobody needs OLED anymore? Well, that honestly goes back to that micro contrast thing. As amazing as those new LCD paste TVs are, they can't do the micro contrast of OLED. And I'm telling you that micro contrast means everything. Honestly, micro contrast is more compelling than extra color brightness and white brightness to most folks. Gonna take a while for those new LCD backlighting technologies to come down in price. Also, it just occurred to me that I've been talking about micro contrast like everybody knows what it is. Micro contrast is something that goes beyond blooming and halo, right? It's the pixel to pixel black level. It's the space in between the pixels that can be totally black. That makes a huge difference when you look at the screen in total or aggregate, like I said before. Anyway, speaking of coming down in price, what about the fact that OLED TVs aren't getting cheaper? Yeah, that is frustrating, especially for those of us who want OLED but can't really afford it right now anyway. Well, OLED, at the end of the day is an enthusiast TV. And I think that if folks, enthusiasts, want it bad enough, they'll wait until they've saved up enough to get it. Many of you have and will. Now, with all of that said, is OLED meant to be the end all be all display technology? Absolutely not. But so long as it does something so awesome that nothing else can do, I don't think it's going anywhere. And we're just talking about consumer desire so far. Don't forget that a lot of professionals love OLED. Also, that's right, I'm not done yet. OLED works great in phones and tablets and other displays. Those smaller OLED screens are cut from the same glass that makes our TVs. You can't really kill one without killing all the others. Also, also, a lot of money. I can't even imagine how much money has been spent on making OLED manufacturing plants. LG Display and Samsung Display are gonna wanna get their money's worth out of those huge bills, especially Samsung, which shunned OLED for a long time and then only recently jumped in. They are for sure going to persevere. Samsung does not give up easily. I mean, they still make 8K TVs, right? I rest my case. So there you go. OLED TVs aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And even if they do, that doesn't mean owning one is a bad idea. They'll still get supported via software updates for a while. I mean, guys, remember, being discontinued didn't do anything to tamp down the enthusiasm for plasma. And it's not gonna steal any of OLED's appeal either. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. What's your take on OLED and its lifespan? Let me know down in the comments. Like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and hit that hype button. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, take care. Maybe buy an OLED. Work extra hard in the edit to keep me from sounding like a deucive. A deucive? What the f is a deucive?